Now that Mardi Gras is over, I'm here to bring you another New Orleans classic, the Milk Punch. Traditionally made with brandy, we'll be putting our own bodega spin on it by using rum instead. We'll be making a few different variations, with Cuban coffee of course, as well as dulce de leche. So as is often said here in New Orleans, let's get to drinking. As you may have guessed, I enjoy my classic cocktails, and the Milk Punch is no exception. Stemming back as far as the 1600s, Milk Punches were popular because they were easy to make in bulk, and brandy was often thought to have medicinal properties. Modern day hospitals may want to take note, because that sounds like an excellent patient experience to me. Milk punches were popular back then because they could also be made shelf-stable through clarification. This process adds some sort of acid to curdle the milk before straining the solids. As you might have guessed by the name, this leaves you with a clearer, smoother end product, but also one you can bottle without needing refrigeration. Even Benjamin Franklin had his own recorded recipe for a clarified milk punch, and if it's good enough for a founding father, it's good enough for me. We won't be getting too fancy by clarifying though, at least for this video anyway. Besides, the advantage of not clarifying your milk punch means you end up with a creamy dessert drink that's excellent for holiday parties and is very popular here in the South. We'll start off by making a classic milk punch using a recipe adapted from the legendary New Orleans restaurant, Commander's Palace. But, like any prototypical Cuban, I prefer rum, so I'll be using that here instead. This traditional version comes together quickly. We'll be using 2 ounces of aged rum. I'm using Appleton Estate here, but anything that's smooth and nutty with notes of vanilla will work perfectly. We'll add it to a cocktail shaker filled with ice, along with 3 quarters of an ounce of cane sugar syrup that I've shown how to make before. As I've mentioned when making old fashions, this ratio helps the syrup keep better, and the turbinado sugar gives more flavor and a molasses-like sweetness when compared with regular white sugar. We'll also be using one ounce of milk, half an ounce of cream, and a bar spoon of vanilla extract. Shake well until it's ice cold before straining it into an old fashioned glass. Garnish with some cinnamon and nutmeg, and enjoy! Sipping this in March, we may be a ways off from Christmas, but this drink still takes me there. In my opinion, rum just plays better with the ingredients that we have here. The baking spices, the vanilla, the rich sweetness. Feel free to use brandy as originally intended for a more traditional feel, but let's get into some of our other variations that may just change your mind. First up will be our dulce de leche milk punch. For those of you who haven't had the pleasure, dulce de leche is just condensed milk that's been heated low and slow until the sugars caramelize. Similar to the turbinado sugar we've used, this gives it a deeply rich, toasted, molasses-like flavor. Dulce de leche is incredibly viscous, however, so to incorporate it into our cocktail, we'll have to melt it down into our milk so it can be poured. Dulce de leche is incredibly easy to make, but I have some already prepared in the fridge. I inadvisably transferred it to a squeeze bottle though, of which it has no hope of piping out. So I implore you to learn from my mistakes, as I take 3 quarters of an ounce of it, adding it to a small saucepan with 1 ounce of milk. Feel free to scale this ratio up if you'd like to make ahead of time or prepare in bulk for a holiday party. Heat it very gently, stirring until the caramel dissolves and you're left with a richly colored liquid. We'll add the 1 and 3 quarter ounces here to our cocktail shaker filled with ice, along with 2 ounces of rum and another bar spoon of vanilla. We won't need any more sugar or cream here, so give it another shake, strain, and garnish up with some more cinnamon and nutmeg. Cheers! Dulce de leche just adds another dimension to this milk punch. 
The caramelized sugars go hand in hand with the rum, and the spices both accentuate and temper the sweetness at the same time. Not to mention the booze, of which this has plenty. David Wondrich, one of the best authorities on cocktail history, dug up this quote from an old newspaper, the Brooklyn Eagle. Milk punch is the surest thing in the world to get drunk on, and so fearfully drunk that you won't know whether you're a cow, yourself, or some other foolish thing. Sitting here two milk punches deep, I'm inclined to agree. So, yeah, I may be shuddering a little at the thought of making yet another, which will bring me to a total of four shots of liquor over the span of a very short filming session. But here goes nothing. We're saving the best, but also the most dangerous, for last, because our last variation will perhaps predictably contain Cuban coffee. Because I'm a glutton for punishment, it contains a shot and a half of this stuff, so there will be a healthy mix of both uppers and downers in my bloodstream by the end of this video. But my mom didn't raise a quitter, and we're soldiering on. Besides, it looks like I'll have some moral support for this last round, much to the dismay of my clean countertops. Add an ounce and a half of unsweetened Cuban espresso to a small saucepan, along with three quarters of an ounce of condensed milk and half an ounce of cream. Be sure to check out my previous video to learn how to make the coffee, but make sure you aren't adding any sugar here, since we're using the condensed milk. Just like before, heat gently and stir until it dissolves. This is another one you can scale up for convenience if you want to make it in bulk. We're adding this portion to our cocktail shaker, along with plenty of ice, two ounces of rum, and a bar spoon of vanilla. Shake well, and pour your death sentence into an old-fashioned glass. I'll leave off the cinnamon and nutmeg, garnishing with a few coffee beans instead. Consider this my advisory to proceed with the caution I clearly don't have before taking your first sip. If this is the way I go out, then so be it. I've made my peace with the mortal plane. This is absolutely worth it. The coffee and the rum coexist in a beautiful harmony. It's creamy, it's boozy, it's everything you could want. Maybe I'm just absolutely tanked right now, which would explain why my favorite little bodega cat is getting some extra affection. But I can't really think of coherent ways to describe this other than saying you have to try one for yourself. It may not be up to everyone's specifications, but it certainly meets mine. This will appropriately be my mental note to make fewer alcoholic drink variations for future videos, but after today, I don't want anyone coming after me saying I have weak pores. Because in this New Orleans-inspired drunken delirium, I turn instead to the San Diego native Ron Burgundy for his wisdom. Milk was a bad choice. You know what's also a bad choice? Procrastinating this filming session and having one of these after midnight. So if you don't mind me, I'll be having a different kind of shot as today's nightcap. 